Uh, just to have a little experiment, I've got a large can of expandable foam. I'm sick of making bloody jackets for um, silicon out of oh, plaster of Paris. It takes ages for them to dry. Really winds me up. So, I've had a bit of a practice. It's, it's not gone off properly yet. But I'm going to rub a mould in there. Just for um, an iring off of a Dalek. Now, I've just tried to peel, peel this back. And it's not stuck. So I'm going to let it set properly and if so that's going to be a fantastic jacket for a silicon mould so we'll see. Uh, it's more or less set. I mean I suggest with something bigger than this making a mould let it set properly because when you start pulling off it's going to bend. Uh, another suggestion. You're going to want to know exactly where this mould fits back in, you know, because obviously you cut it and it's not a perfect shape. So I'd just get a sharpie pen and make some different marks. Oh, that's an X. Try and do an X. So you know which is which. So basically you've got some markers there to line it up. And now it's a case of pulling it out. It didn't stick. So I had to make an expandable foam jacket for your silicon moulds. Now I know the um, expandable foam, it's not it's not cheap. You can actually, you know, it's not cheap if you use um, the brand name ones, but you can get um, you can get them on three ninety nine and things like that. And if you think about all the work you have to do to make a plaster mould, sorry, plaster jacket, I'm going to do this on my Predator mask. Um, uh, well, there isn't no reason why it shouldn't work on this. It's larger, like I say, make sure you, you give it 24 hours to go off though the foam because it will bend. <coughs> uh, but when this has all had um, a couple of more coats of silicon on and it's a bit thicker, then I'll do the expandable foam jacket for it and then I'll, I'll get back to you and let you know how it went.